class, I'm Mr. Betts, and if you had to pick one event to sum up the tensions of the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis would probably be it. Never had the world been so close to World War III and actually knew it at the time. So what brought the U.S. and the USSR to the brink of disaster in 1962? Well, let's backtrack about 140 years. Remember the Monroe Doctrine? The U.S. tells Europe, hey, we got the Western Hemisphere covered and you'll get no more new colonies from it. Well, Spain had already established Cuba as a colony in 1511, so it kind of snuck in under the deadline. That is until 1898 Spanish-American War, remember the main, when Spain was sent packing and Cuba won its independence. Albeit under the condition that the US government would be highly involved in Cuban affairs and get free Cuba Libres whenever they wanted. Fast forward to the 1950s. The US backed and admittedly repressive and corrupt Cuban President Batista is chased out of the country by the communist revolutionary Fidel Castro and that guy that you should really research before you wear a t-shirt of him. So what? Well this was during the Cold War. You know, that historical period where the US and the USSR were constantly at each other throats, never directly fighting, but battling all over the world to promote their way of life and to contain their rivals. Cuba's less than a hundred miles away from Florida, and while we were trying to contain it, now it's across the street from us. And when we find out that the Soviets have been installing nukes in Cuba, things go from bad to ah! Now why would the Russians do this? Well, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev kind of thought that our President Kennedy was, well, a punk. Previously, Kennedy had authorized, but at the last minute pulled out of the Bay of Pigs, a failed plot to overthrow Cuba's communist regime. And when the commies threw up the Berlin Wall in 61, Kennedy just kind of stood there and said, well, that's new. So Khrushchev figured he could just put the nukes in Cuba and the president with the awful Massachusetts accent would just let him be. We better duck and cover for this next part. Now, Kennedy's Joint Chief of Staffs were like, INVADE! But the only problem with that is then the Soviets would probably retaliate with their nukes, and we'd retaliate with ours, and we'd have the mutual assured destruction of everyone. Which is not ideal. So in order to make sure that no new missiles were imported to Cuba, Kennedy ordered a blockade of the island. I, I mean a quarantine, because a blockade is considered an act of war because, uh... Semantics. For 13 days in October 1962, the US and the USSR played a game of nuclear chicken. It seems like both sides had gotten themselves into a situation where they would either have to make their country look weak or start a world war. But behind the scenes, Washington and Moscow were looking for a way out. And thankfully, they found it. Through negotiations, the US agreed not to invade Cuba, as well as to remove some of their missiles from Turkey, which, you know, ordered the Soviet Union at the time. In return, the Soviets would remove the missiles from Cuba. Yay, we're not gonna die! Now this also led to a direct hotline being installed between Washington and Moscow, as well as a nuclear test ban treaty, but the Cold War was by no means over. You still had Vietnam, the space race, Iran, Afghanistan, Grenada, and the list goes on. Kennedy would be assassinated the next year, Khrushchev ousted the year after that, and somehow Fidel Castro would outlast everyone. There you go, the Cuban Missile Crisis Explained, and if you want to learn more about that space race I mentioned, click here for my space race parody done to Taylor Swift's Blank Space. Or click here for my last video, the Bill of Rights done to the Proclaimers, I'm gonna be 500 miles. Hey, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave something in the comments, or share it. You can follow me across all social media at Mr. Betts Class. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.